Hey y'all, it's Kay. Today I'm going to be doing a tool talk. Haven't done one in a while, so I thought we would look at this We Are Memory Keepers punch board. This is a special punch board because it is a flower punch board. It comes with a couple of tools and you've got your cutting deck here. I'm going to take it out of the package in a moment and we'll examine the steps to use it and all of the various elements that come with it. It retails for $24.99 normally. You can find them on Amazon, usually in um, your Hobby Lobbies and your Michaels stores and so forth. You can find the We Are Memory Keepers tools. I had not seen this one before. In my Tuesday morning, they had it originally $9.99, which is a big savings already, but this one was marked down to about $8. that always impresses me about We Are Memory Keepers is the way they put their product together. They come with detailed instructions that are written out, just like a lot of products, and it gives you a detailed picture to look at. But just in case you forget the measurements because, or you lose your paper with the measurements on them, at the bottom they always have charts, and this one even has inches and centimeters and you know how to go back and make these flowers if you lose the instructions. Not only that, they have written directions right here in this area. So you've got your written directions step by step, and then you've got what size you need to cut your paper to make a flower. Then they have guidelines here. This one happens to have a couple of scoring areas that you have to use, one that's vertical and one that's diagonal. It comes with these two tools. You have this one to curl the ends of your flower or your leaves. Also, because it has this slit here, this is one you could actually do a rolled flower. You could put your end of your paper there if you have uh, a paper flower that's cut like that and you could twist it around and get that twisted look. So it has a couple of different uses. The other neat thing is they always or almost always have some kind of scoring area. These tools just slide right here in the end, and so this is one piece when you put it up on your shelf or wherever you happen to store your flower punch boards or your regular punch boards from here. We are memory keepers. I intend to get a vertical file and just slide mine down into a vertical file box. I think that will be a good way for me to keep up with the different punches that I own that are these punch boards, rather. So now I'll demonstrate and we'll go through the steps about how to make a flower with this punch board. If you look at the bottom, it says extra small, extra, extra small, and a small flower. Small flower is a five inch diameter. That makes a pretty large flower. The extra, extra large flower is nine inches. That's as big as a dinner plate. That's the size. So I'm going to start out and make a small and then I'm going to make an extra small and an extra, extra small because these flowers tend to look better from what I'm finding if you layer them up. Another thing I found is that you don't want to use your really, really thick cardstocks. Like the 110 pound, it is really so thick that it's very difficult to do the folding that you need to do because you do kind of an accordion fold and also it bogs down the punch sometimes. And sometimes I have to really get on the punch and punch it down if I use the really thick paper in this one. This is an example of the small flower in five inch diameter. So we're going to look at this in just a moment. This one happens to be made out of some 110 pound cardstock. This may even be thicker than that. It's really thick. So it um, didn't come together very well for a flower you would use like in scrapbooking and so forth. So let me get some paper out and we'll cut. For the first flower I'm going to make, you need a piece of paper that is two and five eighths by 12 inches. So you want, this paper is already 12 inches. So we want to go to the two and five eighths mark, which is just over that half there. And we'll cut our paper. And so that's our first sheet. For our second flower, we need to cut our paper at two and a quarter inches wide. 
We'll take that off. And we need it only to be nine inches long. So I'm going to cut this at nine inches. And that gives us our extra small flower. For our third flower, I'm going to cut it at one and three quarters inches first. So way over here. One and three quarters inches. And for the width, we're going to cut that at six. I think I'll turn it this way and cut it at six inches. So here is our extra, extra small potential flower, our extra small flower, and then our small flower. And then they just go up from there. So I brought back over our scoreboard. And I wanted to show you again, you've got the lines here for scoring. And then on the side here, it goes extra, extra small, extra small, small. We're going to be making, first of all, the extra small flower. And the first thing you want to do is line up the edge of your paper with this vertical line and slide it all the way back to this guide right back here, to the back part of our punch. So we're going to come in and punch. And you can see the rounded edge there. And the next thing you're going to do is move this over to the size flower you're cutting to the XXS line and line it up on the back again and then punch. And you can see the little petal that it cut. And then we're going to take this line, this little indention where we cut, move it over to that extra small line. On the back right there, which is hard to see, just a little bit. And punch. And at the same time, we're going to score. Score on the straight line, score on the diagonal line. And to be honest with you, I forgot it on the first one. So I'm going to put it back in and score straight and diagonal. Okay, hard to see on camera, but you got a straight line, diagonal line, straight line, diagonal line. Now we'll just punch all the way across our paper. And it gets easier because once you make your score lines, I was having a hard time lining it up because I didn't make my horizontal line. And that lines it up right there, making sure it's lined up on this back. Score, horizontal and vertical. Well, actually vertical and diagonal. And then we'll move it over again to the extra, extra small which is the first line right there. Line it up at the back. Let's do vertical, diagonal, punch, move it over to that blue line again. Score, vertical, diagonal, punch. And we're just going to continue that process across our paper. Score, score, punch, and move it over. Score, score, and punch. And that gives us our folds to do our accordion. So you fold on the straight line first, then you pleat it to the diagonal line, fold straight line, diagonal line, straight line, diagonal, straight line, diagonal, fold a straight line on the diagonal, straight line, diagonal. And then we're going to take some glue and attach these. But that's our extra, extra small. Let's make just the extra small. 
Again, we're going to line this up with the vertical line on our board here, our punch board. We're going to punch this. And don't forget to draw the diagonal line, which is what I did forget on the first one. And then we're gonna move it over to the extra small line. Line it up on your backboard back there. That's why it's there to keep you going. Score. Score. Punch. And you can see the beginning of our petal there, and it's a lot bigger than this petal. Okay, so now we're going to do that one more time. I'm gonna show you, and then I will speed up the process. So I'm going to take this fold line, put it on this extra small line, which is the gold one, line it up on my backboard, score, and score again, and punch. And there's our second one. And there we have our last cut. And so then we will also fold these like we did the first one. But before I do that, I'm going to cut out the small flower. So we've done the extra small. Well, actually the extra, extra small, the extra small. Now let's do the small. So for our small flower, it's going to end up being a five inch flower. Of course, it's 12 inches long and two and five eighths inches wide. We're going to put it in here first of all, line it up with our vertical line, punch, score the diagonal, move it over to the small line, right, there. I'm just making sure I get it lined up on my backboard here. Score. So you have to keep your paper held pretty stiff. Punch. And now we move it over to small line. And score. Down. Diagonal. Punch. Move it over to the line. Score down, diagonal, and punch. And now I'm going to speed this up as I work my way across. And there is our last piece. So that's our small one. The directions recommended that you use double stick tape to make the flowers. So I'm going to try that today. I think it would be okay to use glue too. You just have to hold it together. This is score tape that I got on Amazon. This is quarter inch. It's just my favorite one for paper crafting. So this is our first flower that we made, the extra, extra small, and it's been pleated. And then you're supposed to fold it around and put it together. Um, I'm finding that I can't really make it lay flat to do it that way. So it seems to have to be raised. like so. And then the piece that's left over, you can either cut that off, but you need part of it to glue on to the flower. So that's not exactly how I thought it was going to turn out. Otherwise, it's not really fully round, right? If you lay it down. So that doesn't work that well. So that seems to be a limitation to this particular one. This is more about raised maybe um, party decorations. So I think I will come in and attach the small end piece just like so. And we'll put some tape on that. And that will be the beginning part of the middle of our flower that we're making. So let me get out my tape and we'll put that together. I just used my Cricut tool and removed the backing to my tape, and then I'm going to pull it over, pleat that part again, and place it on top. So it comes up kind of like that. Oh, and then you can push it down 
once you get it connected, see I'm learning too, and that does sort of flatten out or it can be slightly raised. Now my recommendation is if you're doing a 3D flower, you might want paper that is colored on both sides, right? A double-sided paper instead of having this white. This particular scrapbook paper that I used was some scraps that I had, but I also picked it because it's not extremely thick or thin. It's just somewhere in the middle. It's probably actually considered lightweight for scrapbook paper. Now let's make this second one. So we'll start here and fold our paper and pleat it into a circle. So up for the straight line, then curve in for the diagonal line up on the straight line, curve in for the diagonal, up on the straight, and curve in for the diagonal, and we'll work our way around, doing the same thing, doing this pleating motion. And we've got that one pleated in, and that one pleated in. So it comes out kind of like that. And for this one, I think I'm going to have to trim the end because I didn't trim it when I did the very last end. So I'll just put this one next to it and cut off this extra piece. Apparently I didn't realize that you have to make sure all of the ends are rounded by using the punch. So if we come around to here and put some tape in, let's see what we have. So I'm going to put some tape right here on the back of this one. Fill up our backing and then pull around our flower. Okay, so we're coming around and we'll join these two together. And now let's see what happens when we try to fold out our flower. It's a snug fit. So there's our extra, extra small, there's our extra small, and we would line them up on top of each other. Now let's do our small flower. This is our small flower, so we'll fold up and then pleat it in. Fold this up, pleat over. And you can tell the petals are a lot larger on this one. Fold it, then on the diagonal, fold up and then the diagonal, fold up, and then the diagonal. Fold up, and then on the diagonal. And then fold up, and on the diagonal. And this one is gonna have to move over behind that one. We'll fold this back and place it on top. And then it actually works. So it took me to the third flower to really figure out how you're supposed to do this last flower. You cut off this diagonal piece and that makes your petals actually line up. Like so. And we will just put a little tape on there. and bring over our piece. And place it on top. And seal that down. That's kind of cute. Now let's bring over the other two. Got that one. Now that I figured it out, it makes me want to go back and cut off the edges of these. My flower is a little busy, so I don't think it turned out that attractive with the three papers I chose. So that's going to take a little practice. It is a little bulky with all of these folds, so you probably want to burnish it really well when you make one. And then you would just take like a paper brad and place it through to the back, or you could use tape. And then, But you want to put something cute in the center, um, some kind of ball or paper bread, a button, you could stick a button on here, and that would make a cute flower. This particular punch also does a leaf. It's not exactly what I thought of as a leaf, but it's kind of cute. So let me show you the leaf feature. 
So for the leaves, they recommend you either do a one by one, a two by two, a three by three, or a four by four leaf. For this one, I'm going to cut a three by three. So I'm just going to place it in my cutter and cut three inches and then we'll turn it on the side and you know what? That's already at three inches. So we have our perfect square. And then what about if we do a two by two as well? So we'll come in, cut it at two, and turn it around, cut it at two so we get our perfect square. So for the leaf, they recommend you do, again, one by one, two by two, up to four by four. Turn it around backwards, if you will and place in one of your corners in the back part here and punch. And then you turn it around the opposite end, diagonally across, put it back in the reverse punch. Make sure we got that in there well. And you have kind of a leaf shape now. That's real pretty. And then you take it, place it back in your board here and line it up on this vertical line so that the tip is touching the line on both ends and then score it down the middle. This paper that I'm using here is really thick. This is at least 110 pound. It is nice paper, not good for a flower, but for a leaf it's fine. And then of course you want to fold on that line and that's what they use for a leaf. So that's what it would look like. I didn't have any green, so I just made it out of that yellow so we could see it well. Now, if you do the smaller size, of course, it's going to be, well, a lot smaller. Place it in here in the reverse end, punch diagonally across. We're going to place that end in and punch. Then we turn it back around and we score down the middle. Place the point each point on this vertical scoring line. Whoops. Hard to get that right on that line with that thick paper. And then we'll fold it in the middle. This paper's so thick it almost thinks, you know, we could put it on here and make some diagonal lines too if we lined it up just right. They didn't recommend that, but I just thought, hmm, makes it look more like a leaf to me. And then I come in here and do the same thing. I'll have to make it the opposite. But fold that down and that gives us a leaf. This again is the two by two. I didn't even do the one by one because it comes out so small for this giant flower. Now, if you're doing, of course, just some small flowers, you probably want the one by one for that particular flower. But this two by two would work eh, pretty well on this flower. But for the big one, you definitely want an even larger one. All right, so I'm putting my flower back together. We have all three pieces. And yes, we could come in and make another row because it has another measurement. It has several, and you can keep going pretty far out on these. We've got our leaf to go with it. This one kind of works. It's a little smaller. Not bad. And of course, you do these in green. And you can make a cute party decoration, like when people do the backdrops for parties and put flowers up at the top and use like plastic tablecloths hanging down. That would be really cute, but you would want to take it out probably a little bigger, maybe the next size up. They give you the measurements on this little scoring board. And when you go up to make the large flower, you do three and a half by nine, but you piece it together. And for the extra large to get the eight inch diameter, it's like four inches by 10 and a half inches. And then you piece it together and they give you instructions on how to do that. So we only have one more thing to go and that's using this tool. What this tool is used for is to curl the edges of your flower. You slide it in through the little notch and just kind of curl it in. And that's gonna give you more of a 3D effect. I think this takes a little practice too. but that is how they recommend you curl the flowers, the tips of the petals, to give it more of a floral 3D look. So you go around.
And so you could curl just the tips there or you can come further in. I think it just depends on personal preference. But you probably want to practice and make sure they all look the same. But that does give more of a realistic look. Let's do the next one. Place in our tool. Curl it. Some of them are a little more perfect than others. I think this is a particular tool takes a little practice. So there is the first one and the second one. Okay, I did want to show you that on this big one, if you put in your tool, it does not go all the way across because the slit doesn't come all the way across. So for this one, you just want to come under the back side of the flower and just kind of curl it this way. Otherwise, I suppose you go side to side. This is kind of what I figured out. Like that. And it does give it a better look. It doesn't look so flat. So we got our bottom one. And we've got the middle one. And this one. And you could use them individually. Or you can stack them. You could do all the same color. You could put some veins in the leaf by just scoring it. But all in all, not a bad tool. I can see several uses for it. I definitely think it's worth the $8 price tag. Is it worth the $28 price tag? Well, if you're doing a party and you're doing a huge backdrop, buying flowers can be really expensive. And you could get a pack of paper a lot cheaper than individual sheets. You could get solid colors. You probably want to make sure that they're solid core so that the color goes all the way through, back, front, and of course through the middle. But I think it's a fun tool to have. Now, will I use it a lot in my scrapbooking? I'm not sure that I will. Will I use it a lot on the paper channel? I can see me using it in a few videos. I don't think this is something I would use in a mini album or a scrapbook. But it's a very interesting, unique tool. And it's another use for using paper. Paper flowers are all the rage right now. I know that even Cricut has paper flowers in their design studio. You may have seen us do that in a previous video on our other channel. But this is a lot cheaper than a Cricut, especially if you can find one at Tuesday morning and get it for around $10 up to $8, anywhere from $8 to $10. Um, I think it'd be worth it. I think it really would be worth it. You could probably get it at Joann's when they have it 50% off or a special coupon. Um... But something to think about. Leave me a comment below and tell me what you think. It isn't hard to use. It did take a little bit of a learning curve to figure out exactly where to fold it when you put it together. But by the time I did the third one, I got a lot better at that. But let me know what you think. I think I will definitely hold on to this. I'm not going to take it back or anything. And maybe I'll throw a party in the future and I'll need a bunch of these flowers. Later on, I think I'll come in and I'll make one of the really large ones and see, because somebody asked me not too long ago, as a matter of fact, would I make some big flowers? I think this is definitely the easiest way to do it if you don't have a Cricut and can hand cut them. But let me know what you think. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I hope you will tune in this weekend. We're going to be doing Craft Chat on our other channel tomorrow. We also are going to do Sunday Fun Day on this channel and our other channel as well. So you have a great week and a great weekend, guys. Bye! Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. Bye y'all!